Everyone's out to be on top these days. And in the satellite and communications industry, guess who that is? It's SpaceX. And they have a bit of a running start. Meanwhile, Avanti Communications sat down for an interview with the UK-based operator CEO, Kyle Whitewall. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at what Whitehall has to say about Avanti's future. So stay tuned. First off, a look at what Avanti Communications has been up to. After shedding off a debt of over $810 million through an equity deal, Avanti Communications is ready to expand in Africa. The debt mainly came from the cost of building five geostationary satellites and caused trouble when they failed to sell out in time. But after the pandemic, markets are stabilizing. And now, Avanti is shifting from consumer broadband to cellular backhauls, governments, and other satellite operators. With new deals in the works, CEO Kyle Whitehall is determined to get the company back on track. Secondly, how Avanti intends to use their lessened debt to go further. Well, debt helped build a ground network for Avanti. It also weakened people's confidence in it. Not to mention, a lot of time was needed to manage the external parties, and the whole purpose of the business got neglected. Now that Advanti is dealing with less debt, it has time to expand itself, and people are less worried about its sustainability. A lesson learned is a lesson earned. If you're a big operator, it's easy for you to take a GEO satellite to market and end up with a steady flow of money. But if you're just a startup, it's tiring to try and keep up with the high interest rates and you can't focus on your markets. Instead of going for another GEO satellite, Avanti is focusing on expanding its distribution capacity across Africa. An example is the new earth station being built in Senegal that will allow access to several West African countries previously out of reach. Thirdly, an update on Avanti's goals, including trying to hit $100 million in revenue. Mobile operators are essential to achieve access to different places, but widespread distribution in Africa isn't an easy task as equipment has to be physically delivered to very remote areas. And this has driven Avanti to support these mobile operators and tower companies struggling to physically deploy on such sites. The fill rate's nearly at 60%, but some things still have to be done. Firstly, the Hylus 3 has to be monetized, and then deal with a dozen or so African countries where doing business is hard. Once these two things are dealt with, Avanti has a much better chance to reach the industry standard. While Avanti's a bit short on its $100 million annual revenue goal, there are chances that they'll reach it by the end of 2023. And they have about four to five commercial initiatives, and as long as they can deliver in the next 12 months, they'll get there. Next up, how Viasat and Immersat combining is beneficial to Avanti. Avanti is well aware that customers will need a blend of different tech, and they don't need to see other companies as a threat. Africa is a whole continent, and one of the biggest challenges is to pr prioritize the six to eight countries that have big economic value instead of trying to be available in all 50 countries. Instead of seeing them as completion, Avanti is looking to be a suitable partner for LEO, MEO, and GEO. The goal is to integrate a system that bundles different networks together so they can work with each other to provide services to places where one company would easily exhaust itself. Both Viasat and Immersat are customers of Avanti, so combining them will probably be beneficial. But till now, this hasn't affected Avanti, mostly because the deal isn't complete, and both are relatively independent, not to mention, neither of them has expanded to Africa. Viasat seems to believe in the future of GEO, and hopefully, Avanti will be a positive part of it. Other than that, Brexit's positive effect on the industry and Avanti's stance on going public. Interestingly enough, Brexit had a positive impact on the British space industry, probably because it provoked investment in thinking. While it won't be competing with the likes of Airbus, Boeing, or Tails, etc., there will be on some British companies seen taking part in the economy. In the end, the British government finally decided to take space seriously. Many people think that going public helps in borrowing money from the public, but it's a tricky business. After all, Avanti had a reason for abounding stock listing. They had borrowed huge amounts of money from the public, and it became a burden for them. It was decided that Avanti would refrain from asking for more money, and all their bonds were delisted. There won't be any expansion into the in-flight connectivity industry because when it's working with someone, Avanti won't be able to establish direct competition with them and instead focused on its own segment of the industry. Right now, Avanti is supporting the delivery of several global in-flight connectivity contracts and global energy contracts. Finally, 5G's impact and how Avanti is helping Ukraine. The mobile industry has been talking about 3G, 4G, and 5G for quite some time now, especially 5G. The biggest upside of this is that mobile and satellite industries are forced to work with each other. The mobile industry didn't trust the satellite industry, and about two years were needed if a mobile operator was to integrate a satellite network into their own bit. And these two industries are finally working together. There will be a day when every machine will be connected, but right now, our technology isn't advanced enough for this. But 5G poses a real opportunity that such an efficient network will be created. While it will take time to reach Africa, it's still a very exciting prospect that billions of devices will have this capability. Avanti is lucky enough to be set in a position where it can help, mainly in three categories. First, it'll help in the reconstruction of Ukraine's infrastructure as pretty much all their network has been lost. Secondly, satellite 
satellite technology will be used to show countries what's going on beyond their borders. And thirdly, many blue chip companies are operating in Ukraine, but they've lost their networks. And there's a lot of interest in building networks that will help them keep operating. Now, in other news, SpaceX wants upgraded Starlink mobile services. SpaceX has applied to the United States Federal Communications Commission for consent to improve the Starlink satellite broadband services by adding the 2 gigahertz spectrum band to increase its mobile satellite services, or MSS. The application was sent on July 25th, but further explanations about the futuristic services plan were not provided. The senior director of SpaceX satellite policy, David Goldman, said in an interview with the FCC that the planned next generation services for mobile users would work with a lag under 50 milliseconds, which is inconspicuous for consumers. Their arrangements for future Starlink satellites to include a modular payload to allow it to relay frequencies in the 2 gigahertz band. The higher frequencies are currently used by the constellation in the Ku and Ka spectrum bands to supply broadband to mostly established users. Goldman also said that existing ground equipment and user terminals will be leveraged by the 2 GHz MMS system, and brand new Earth station equipment will be added to provide the optimal performance for the user. NASA forms joint venture with Boeing Northrop. A contract to a Boeing Northrop Grumman joint venture for space launch system missions that might run up to the middle of the next decade is about to be awarded by NASA. A pre-solicitation notice for its exploration production and operations contract was published by NASA on July 26. This effectively shifts the acquisition of SLS launches to a service contract. This means that NASA will only buy the launch services and not the actual vehicles for the missions in the late 2020s, starting with Artemis 5. NASA started Epoch to save money and also paved the way for heavy lift rockets to be used for other purposes. The baseline of the contract covers the mission from Artemis 5 till 9 and leaves options for Artemis 10 till 14 and for up to 10 launches other than Artemis. If the contract works out and is granted an extension, it will be running through the Artemis 14 mission, predicted by NASA to take the skies in 2036. It is expected that NASA will award the contract to the new joint venture Deep Space Transport LLC. Finally, 5G booster to re-enter on July 31st. The Aerospace Corporation has predicted that the first stage of the Long March 5B rocket, which launched by the Wenshin Space Module of China, might enter the atmosphere again on July 31st. China's second module for the Tiangong space station was launched on July 24th. Around 13 hours later, the Wenshin module succeeded in docking with the Tianhe core module, which was already orbiting in space. The large first stage of the rocket, which acts as the upper stage for the mission, entered the orbit, inserting the payload into its planned orbit. The tracking by the United States Space Command showed the Long March 5B booster, the Wenshin module, and the other objects related to the launch reached space and were in orbit. The 53.6 meter tall stage, believed to have a mass of nearly 23 metric tons has been intently tracked by the experts at the Center for Orbital and Reentry Debris Studies. They suspect a re-entry to happen at 11.07 UTC on July 31st. Although due to certain challenges, the window for re-entry is rather large and it will become narrower as the re-entry event comes closer. And that's a wrap for this video. Do you think Avanti Communications can become a power player in the industry? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.